So hi everyone, my name is Jesse Chen, and I'll be presenting today on uh, QAVA, which be, stands for Quota Aware Video Adaptation. And this is a joint work with Amitav Ghosh, who is a former uh, postdoc research in, researcher from our group, and also Professor Chang. So QAVA is motivated by two factors. The first is the rise of usage-based pricing. So like Mong has mentioned, um, 10, 10, for example, is the dollars per gigabyte charged by AT&T Wireless whenever the user goes above a two gigabyte data cap. And this is in contrast to previous, uh, maybe five years ago when you had, say, unlimited data plans. And the second motivating factor is the rise of video traffic. So you've also probably seen this figure before, but Cisco predicts that in 2016, 70% of mobile traffic will be from video. And even right now, the current statistics, uh, Cisco says, are about 50% of mobile traffic from video. So we find that there's a conflict between these two trends, because on one hand, you have the video traffic becoming dominant. And another example uh, of this uh, video traffic is that Sandvon reports that 30% uh, of downstream traffic uh, in the US, wireline networks, comes from Netflix alone, which is a single content provider. And the second factor being that usage-based pricing is becoming, becoming prevalent not only in wireless networks, like I mentioned, but also in wireline networks and around the world. So this table shows uh, examples from the US, Canada, and India for both wireline and wireless ISPs. So the question we aim to ask in this work is, can the consumer consume her video content without worrying about her wallet? So what are the current approaches in practice? Well, there are two main approaches. Firstly, consumers could be warned by service providers or applications. So for example, in Android, you already have a built-in uh, in 4.0. They started providing a data monitoring app where you can see how much of your data is used from different applications. And also, there's other uh, apps, such as uh, DataMe, which was just presented. And the second major approach is a one-size-fits-all approach of cutting back on the rates of the videos at all times. So for example, what Netflix does is it provides a user account page, uh, settings page where you can choose either medium, uh, low, medium, or high video quality for all your videos in order to save uh, on the user's uh, data quota. There's also Onavo, which is a mobile application uh, startup, which compresses image and images and text to save on users' data, but they don't consider video. And also related work, which is complementary to our approach, is the recent indus industry attention on adaptive HTTP streaming, which aims to address bandwidth constraints. So when you stream a video over your, um, over your home network or over your cell phone, they try to change the video quality in response to how much bandwidth they think you have. And uh, this e industry attention has centered from uh, Adobe, Microsoft, and Apple. And also, especially recent attention has focused on uh, standardization efforts from the MPEG group, which has resulted in the MPEG dash standard uh, for video adaptation. So we consider there's some kind of video consumption trade-off, a three-way trade-off between the distortion of the video, the cost to the consumer in terms of dollars out of their wallet or bytes, equivalently, and also in terms of the number of videos watched. So we want to design a solution that meets three goals. Firstly, we want to stay within the budget of the, of the video, uh, of the user's quota, and our control knob here is the megabytes of videos. And secondly, we want to minimize the video distortion to ensure that the user has a good quality of experience. And to do that, we leverage the video compressibility. And thirdly, we want to ensure that the user is supplied with all the videos that she want, he or she wants. And to do that, we, le we leverage the user's uh, usage profile or behavioral consumption patterns over the course of the billing cycle. So in order to meet these three goals, we propose our system, which we call Quota Aware Video Adaptation, or QAVA. So our main question is, uh, are, is every bit needed for every user at every time? And our key idea here is that all bytes are charged the same on cellular data plans, but not all bytes are uh, equally uh, perceived by the user. So in order to meet the three goals I mentioned earlier, we split our model into three system, uh, three, we split our system into three modules. Firstly, stream selector, video profile, and user profile. So the stream selector is the heart of the system, and its goal is to choose the right quality of video in order to maximize video quality while staying under the user's quota. And the video profiler um, needs to, uh, tries to estimate the compressibility of different types of videos. And I'll be showing you a short video clip later on uh, to concretize what I mean. 
And finally, there's a user profile which predi uh, predicts the user's behavioral patterns from past histories in order to enable our algorithms to make smarter decisions on the face of, on future. So here's the system architecture we propose. And there are many different architectures within, the, within this design space, and here's just one specific instance that we focus on for this work. So because the video profiler requires information about the types of videos the user watches, it should be located on the content provider's server. And the user profiler requires information about the user, so it should be located on the user's device. And finally, the stream selector, which chooses the bit rate for every video, can be located on the user device, within the ISP's network, or on the content provider. And in this uh, case, we choose to locate it on the content provider server to avoid some uh, message passing. But in any case, the algorithm, algorithms we design uh, could be used for a variety of system architectures. So I'll go through each of the three modules in turn, and before I turn to simulations and implementation. So firstly, let me talk briefly about the uh, video profiler, which tries to estimate the compressibility of the video. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's some kind of utility cost trade-off, where you have diminishing returns for increasing cost. So the figure on the top here shows an example of the uh, utility, utility curve, where we measure utility of the video in PSNR, which is a standard objective metric, and the cost of the video in megabytes, because that's what matters to the user's uh, data, data plan. And we, in our lab, we ran uh, a user study, and we asked about 10 or 20 uh, volunteers to watch different videos and rate their quality. And we're able to see that uh, different types of videos have different uh, utility curves. So for example, in the bottom figure here, we see that uh, a, uh, a sports video has much higher distortion than uh, a talk show video. So the sports is the red, the talk show is uh, the light blue figure, the light blue curve at the bottom. So I'll show you just a brief demonstration of what I mean. Uh, I'm going to show you a video clip where there will be two videos playing side by side. The left version will be 100 kbps, and the right version will be 300 kbps. And I'll show you first an action video, a talk show video, and then an action video. So you can see whether uh, you can tell the difference between the two versions. So, just... So here we're going to start with Emma Watson in a talk show video. Hope you can see it. So the left version, although it uses three times less bytes than the right version, actually look pretty similar. You can't really tell uh, much difference between them. So if Quava knows this, then it can choose the leftmost version and save on bytes for the user. So this is a clip from X-Men, which represents a more action-oriented video. And in this case, you can see the left version, which uses three times fewer bytes, has much more um, pixelation. I hope, hope it's not too bright. Uh, so you can see some clear chunks here. So in this case, if Quava takes advantage of this, it can also choose the writer video, uh, the rightmost version, because it knows that the, users, uh, the user will prefer it more in the left video. So the takeaway message from this uh, brief clip is that users have different perception of low and high motion videos. And the low motion videos are more compressible because um, you won't notice the difference if I reduce the bytes spent on that video. Secondly, I'll uh, briefly mention the user profiler, which tries to predict the user's future data consumption patterns. And I'll just briefly mention uh, the kinds of trends that we're looking for. So for example, you might have seasonality or uh, periodicity say if the users uh, use more data on the weekends versus the weekdays. And you might also try to examine the user for long-term trends in upwards or, or downwards. So I won't go into our de uh, the, the details of our approach here, but I'll just say that um, in our user profile, we try to estimate the probability of a user requesting a video uh, during different time periods of the billing cycle. And we also try to estimate which types of videos the user is, prefers. And, uh, prefers. So do they let, are they more action-oriented or are they more um, talk show-oriented? So finally, I'll talk about the heart of the system, which is the stream selector, which tries to choose the right bit rate for every video for a single user across time during the billing cycle. So if we know all the requests in advance, we have uh, an offline problem, where we try to maximize the total utility 
subject to, subject to the constraints of spending less than the budget and choosing one bit rate per, per video. And this is a simple integer programming problem, which is also called the maximal, multiple choice uh, knapsack problem. So in this classical version, uh, the solution is well known uh, through dynamic programming in uh, pseudo-polynomial time. But this is for the offline problem only. So in our case, uh, we don't have the knowledge of all the items of the knapsack, or the videos, equivalently. So we cannot uh, run the traditional algorithms. So instead, we need to run some kind of online algorithm which deals with each request when it arrives. So I'll give you a simple toy example to show you what I mean uh, between online and offline algorithm. So imagine you're going to watch two videos in the billing cycle. You have a total budget of three, and the items are your videos, which have a utility cost a pair. So if I'm the greedy online algorithm, when the first video arrives, I might choose the video which maximizes you with the greater utility, which is the green video here. And then I only have uh, one unit of budget left, so when the second video arrives, I only have one choice available. But now imagine in the offline problem, if I knew all of the, in the video requests in advance, I could make a better decision, so I could um, try to maximize my total utility. And clearly, with greater knowledge of the future, of the future, we'll, re we'll receive, uh, we'll maximize the total utility while still staying under the budget. So our problem is a harder one in the sense that we need to run an online algorithm. So how do we uh, tackle this problem? Well, we model this problem using a finite horizon markup decision process, where the finite horizon takes into account the fact that the billing cycle is finite. So the decisions I make at the beginning of the billing cycle might be different from the decisions I make at the end of the billing cycle. So the, uh, I didn't show the details here, but the main uh, formulation is to maximize at each time step the current utility plus an expectation of the future utility based on my predictions of the future. So I'll just run through a, a toy example here of uh, what this, this uh, MDP looks like. So for example, if you have three possible videos, the red video, the green video, and the blue video, each characterized by a UC pair, and the videos arrive randomly. So uh, you might have, on the left side, you might have a budget of B, and you might be making a decision on the red video. And you have a choice of choosing either bit rate one or bit rate two. And if you choose bit rate one, then you move to a new state randomly with a budget of B minus C1, and now you need to make a decision on either the blue video or the green video, depending on what the user requests. And similarly, if you choose bit rate two, then once again you receive a new budget of B minus C2, and you need to make a decision again on the blue video or the green video. <laughs> So this is just showing you what the markup decision process looks like. And in our paper, we uh, give more details on the solution technique, which is using a standard backward induction technique. So finally, we simulate using data request traces from publicly available data. And this data is uh, YouTube request traces from a wireless campus network over 14 days. And we evaluate our algorithms at uh, four different algorithms. Firstly is MDP, which is our proposed approach. MCKP, which is a state-of-the-art literature approach for solving the online multiple-choice knapsack problem. We also look at Netflix. So, um, like I mentioned to you earlier, Netflix allows you to choose between low, medium, high quality for all your videos. And finally, the offline algorithm, which knows everything in advance. So on the right finger here, uh, we just show an example of the bitrate selection decisions over time. So the black uh, figure uh, shows the offline algorithm, which chooses a variety of rates over time. The red figure shows a Netflix algorithm, which always chooses, in this case, the medium bit rate of 200 kbps. The purple figure shows the uh, literature approach, which uh, it solves the multiple choice knapsack problem, but it doesn't have an idea of uh, the future utility of different videos. So it's kind of, it kind of spends a lot of its budget at the beginning, but it doesn't save much for later. And finally, the blue approach is our proposed approach. And in this case, because we are maximizing over expectation of the future, then we're able, we try to save a little bit of budget in the beginning, and we're, we're more willing to spend later on, where the billing cycle is almost over. So we run a simulation um, and ask how do these algorithms perform for different user request traces, and also sweeping across different examples of different quotas. <coughs> so on the left figure, we show a case for a single user. And we evaluate once again these four algorithms. And the y-axis is, is total utility over the billing cycle, and the x-axis is sweeping over quotas. So in this case, we find that the uh, hindsight offline optimal uh, needs to perform the best. But our uh, MDP approach achieves quite close to the op to optimal solution. And the right figure, we uh, average across multiple users. 
And we also normalize the quota and the, uh, optimal util the percentage of util optimal utility. And we find that our approach also performs fairly, fairly well. And so finally, we also perform implementation. Um, firstly, we implemented in Silverlight web browser, uh, which uses Microsoft Smooth Streaming. And there's a screenshot of it here. And we also implemented our system as an Android application. So here are three screenshots. And on the left, we have a category selection. So the user uh, is able to choose which category video they want to, to watch. The middle screen uh, is a little hard to see, but it shows the different videos that the users can select within category. And the right figure is the video feedback. So uh, once the user finishes watching a video, we ask them to rate how good the quality of the video was so that we can evaluate how well our algorithm picked a, picked a video rate. Uh, so this is still part of ongoing work, and we're hoping to uh, run this, give this Android app to different users and ask them to uh, volunteer to evaluate our system. So that's mostly it for uh, all I want to say today. So just to sum up, today I discussed the conflicting trends of usage-based pricing versus increased video consumption. And I developed a system design for a quota-aware video adaptation, where we said that not every bit is needed for every user at different times of the billing cycle. And our next steps are to continue to work with the Android application, and also to explore the uh, design space, and also in particular, uh, client-based implementation architectures. Um, so that sums up my talk, and thanks a lot for listening, and I'd be happy to take any questions. And for further details, you can also see our paper uh, from last year in, in Codex. Thank you.